Exactly. All I know is anyone can tell you this is untenable, unsustainable, mega dangerous. The elites are running the bunkers, delivering armored vehicles to every city, and preparing to round up patriots. Does that sound like a good scenario to you? I don't have all the answers. All I know is this is going on, and it's bringing in a world government run by people that are so wicked they want total world domination over everything you do, every decision you make, and over your mind. The globalists do not want you to be perceptive. They do not want you to be powerful. They do not want you to be free. They are incredible enslavers. And all I know is they're not good. They claim they're engaging in all this tyranny to bring in a total control system to protect the earth from wars and factions killing each other. I'll be honest with you. If there was a quasi-tyranny, I'm just going to be totally honest from now on, that had good fruits and empowered individuals but went and shut down really bad people, I would say it was a lesser of evils, very dangerous, might become the ultimate tyranny down the road, but I wouldn't fight it to the point of putting my full will against it to where I try to force its hand against me. There isn't a cell in my body that doesn't know the globalists are pure death to our culture and this society. They are absolutely turned over to destruction of freedom. They are absolutely turned over to dumbing down the population. They are totally committed to every form of oppression you can imagine. There is no worse course than going along with them. Going along with these people, acquiescing, playing along with this modern matrix is suicide. And it's suicide of the soul, and I'm not going to be part of it. So, all I can tell you is I sit back and I study history and I study these people and it's just unspeakable the stuff they pull off and things they do. And the will to exercise power by these people is incredible. It takes will to put fluoride in water, knowing it's going to dumb people down and cause cancer and infertility. It takes will in every major vaccine line to put hardcore cancer-causing viruses that implant in the sides of the cells, in the cell membranes, and then activate as a time-released weapon to cause a horribly long, painful death where they then suck all the money out of the person they're killing. I mean, that is more vampiric than anything I can imagine in some Bram Stoker novel. And if you spiritually look at these people, I hate to be dark, but people don't want to look at the darkness because it scares them. And then... The darkness cloaks itself in the light. And so you don't want to look at it because on the surface it looks beautiful. But if you look at the fruits of the New World Order, the fruits of these people, it is abject sorrow. And so I'm just here, and my team of great reporters and crew are here to try to just warn people as best we can. We don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. We just know evil when it's staring us right in the face. And they play these childlike games with everybody on the news. Where they just sit there and go, there's no death panels. You can keep your doctor. It's going to be free. We're not coming for your guns. Nobody wants world government. There's no such thing as a plan for carbon taxes. That's ridiculous, Senator. What, do you think we didn't land on the moon, too, and there's little aliens? Oh, really, Al Gore? Here's your company for carding carbon trading. I'm not going to respond to that. It's kind of like that congressman when he's talking to Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura goes, what about this bill for FEMA camps and a set-up nationwide for political dissidents? That guy goes, I don't believe in big machines with green aliens coming out eating people. Ventura goes, no, here's the bill. 
And the guy goes, oh, that bill. Oh, that was another bill. It's all funny to them. They live, we sleep. They're aware of the secrets of the universe. To a greater extent, we aren't. But it's our fault that we've let these people in control. I've told you for many years, because it was announced by the Council of the Americas, run by the Rockefellers and the UN, it's been put in all the main government literature. I made films about it showing you the literature, showing you their speeches, showing you the four-year documents. 15 years ago, 8 years ago, these are big data dumps that came out. And they just have responses on television saying, Lou Dobbs and Alex Jones are insane. There is no secret treaty from Waco, Texas, 2005. There is no move for a world government. And there is no move to make Atlanta or L.A. There's an open commission. It's being set up to establish the North American capital. And to declare North America a Latin American state. Now, that's been agreed to by the corporations and countries at least 15 years ago when I first saw it, agreed to. With the head ministers at meetings agreeing to it. Hollywood Reporter today, Infowars.com. It's on DrudgeReport.com as well. L.A. touts itself as northern capital of Latin America for 2024 Olympic bid. And they officially say it's going to be the capital of all of Latin America. And it's funny, in some of those documents, that's what they say. We don't want Atlanta because it's too eastern. It won't be accepted to then join the full American Union. So we should stick it in L.A. And there it is. And they just roll it out in front of you like they do everything else. And here's my issue. I'm not against the people of Latin America. But the reason they want to merge us with this is because those people never got out from under colonialism for real. They're enslaved. The globalists have got them in a total death grip. And they're only bringing them up here to forge them into a political move that'll break any voting block in North America to stop the public merger into the NAU that was signed by Vicente Fox, Paul Martin, and George W. Bush at Baylor, Texas in 2005. And it came out in the Banff Canada documents where they admitted it was ratified and signed, so the corporations gave the orders. The heads of government state then voted again to certify and ratify it. The president signed it, and then they had a secret legislature certified I mean we're already under it but they're just getting us ready for the announcement I mean this is the games they play people so listen they are setting up a world government and it's a world government where they forcibly inoculate you with stuff where you get cancer 10 years later and they kill you dead in hand and David Rockefeller's upset that you're not taking the shots so now they're just going to spray it on us I know we got loaded phone lines and we'll get to them and we kick the next hour off here in about 7 minutes so, I'm not against all these poor, desperate Latin American people that want to come here. In fact, on average, I like people from Latin America. In many cases, they are harder working than spoiled third, fourth, fifth generation Americans. So that goes for black kids, white kids, Hispanic kids. Everybody knows they tend to get more spoiled, more rotten each generation. Until you'll see really nice white families with the worst grandkids you can imagine. Really nice black families with the worst black you know, grandkids you can imagine. Or Hispanic kids. I mean, it really is a phenomenon. So we're so corrupt and decadent. I, I, there's an argument that they sell that makes sense. Hey, just let in a bunch of third world people because, you know, we killed all our babies. We don't have kids. And we need somebody to pay Social Security. And these people work pretty hard. The government is advertising now for deadbeats that want welfare and have their babies for free. And the Democrats scoop them up and turn them into hardcore communists. Running around with red flags. I mean, I see communists every week now on the side of the road with red flags. I'll just be downtown having dinner and 500 commies march by, you know, screaming, kill the police. I mean, I got video. And so the globalists are making their move is the point. So I understand people wanting to come here. I know a lot of immigrants are great people. I'll say on average when it comes to common sense, appreciating things, 
probably have better souls than a fifth generation spoiled American. Just from what I've experienced. I know they're easier to wake up to the new world order if I can communicate with them. But the globalists have looked at all the numbers. They've looked at all the angles and they've decided we need giant Eastern European, giant Asian, giant Middle Eastern and giant Central and South American populations up here. And we're going to politically use these people to break the back of the republic forever, take the guns, the whole nine yards. Same thing with Europe. And the socialist parties and the communist parties state that. And they admit that. And that's the key. They're arrogant. They think we're so stupid, they've admitted all this. I mean, look at these articles I have right here. Look at these articles. Germany and Austria lose borders. But now they've closed them. I'm going to explain what's behind that. But here's the key. Report, Sweden's pro-refugee policies aren't working out so well. Well, if you want to destroy the country, they're working really well. It's like shooting somebody in the head and saying that bullet didn't work too well. No, it worked really well. Open borders, welfare state, bad news for Europe's most welcoming country. That's their national slogan. The Globe and Mail reports a major new research firm study now, get these numbers. In Sweden, where equality is revealed, inequity is now entrenched. And it goes on to break it down that 58% of welfare payments go to immigrants, 16% to the population that's native. And a lot of them aren't really Swedes. Think about that. Staggering unemployment rate for immigrants even after 15 years of living in the country, and skyrocketing welfare cost, And then it gets into the 1,400% rise in rapes. 95% of it is the immigrants. Now, these guys from the Middle East don't rape you if you're covered up and have a hood over your head. They'd be scared to death. If you're walking around with your face out, it means you want to be raped or you're a prostitute. And so that mixes with weird Western gangster culture. Because that's what the young kids are like. They're not really even Muslims anymore. It's like thugs that hate the West who think your 12-year-old daughter can be raped because she's wearing a short skirt. I mean, it is crazy. I mean, just, I'm sorry. People from the most third world Middle Eastern countries do not fit in Sweden, folks. They just don't. And the, the engineers know that. I mean, it just doesn't fit. It's like putting Martians in your living room. I just made a statement that's a gift to MSNBC and the rest of the White House runs scum. I said that if you take, say, Bedouins out of Saudi Arabia, and you put a half million of them in, say, a German city or in a, in, in a, in a region of Sweden, it would be like sticking Martians in your living room. That's how alien the cultures are from each other. And the same goes for taking a half million Swedes and sticking them, say, in an outskirt of Tripoli. But millions of Muslim migrants are allowed into Europe every year. And I'll be honest, if they come from, say, like Prussia, they come to Prussia, in Germany, and let's say they come from Iran, I've seen the statistics, I've seen the numbers, they integrate well. Because that's been an industrial country, a modern civilization, before Europe could read and write. But the dominant culture in the Middle East, and I'm not bashing Bedouins or anything, but that's who got the power, that's who got the money, that's who runs Islam now. And that's who is basically turning the Middle East into a Stone Age hellhole. And the worst people to adapt and to work with the West are then brought over here. And a huge stinking red carpet is rolled out and everything's supposed to be for free. Who would put up with this? Do you think Mexico would take a million or two million radical Islamists into its country? No way. The Mexicans would burn everything down in a week. That shows how tolerant the West has become, that we would put up with this. So I wanted to talk after we take calls about the larger master plan. 
of 